Hey everyone, I am live here and I hope you don't have epilepsy because that fan moving with that light could be not so good, it's just like my beard. But all things aside, we're going to know a lot more about the thyroid. In fact, we're going to know a lot more. That was an awful pun. And if you block me on Facebook and all other channels because of how awful that was, go ahead. I will not blame you in any capacity because that was horrible. So what's not horrible is we have to talk about right here, you know, your thyroid, or maybe it's not there, but we need to really discuss and shed a lot of light on this because there is not a day that goes by where I don't talk to someone who has some sort of thyroid issue. And that could be a broad range of things from, I think it's my thyroid, to they have full-blown Hashimoto's and they're worried about all the side effects that are racking up along the way as time goes on. So this is a really important topic to dive into because, you know, if you have a thyroid issue, this is incredibly important to know because if you don't really understand what's going on, you're never going to really able to fix it. And if you think it's a thyroid issue, this will help you sort of guide what you're thinking about in terms of doing for your own management. And of course, if you don't even know what a thyroid is and that you have one and it has multiple lobes, this is a great time for you to understand how it's all involved, whether you have adrenal fatigue, chronic fatigue, sleep issues, and anything and everything in between here. And so really, this is going to be fun. But first things first, and this is actually not a but, this is an and, and disclaimer, none of this is medical advice. This is all provide it for educational purposes only. Do not make any decisions based on what I'm saying here today. Always, always, always talk to your healthcare provider when making any decisions on your health. And I am not your licensed healthcare provider. I'm not, okay? I'm just a man on the screen here teaching you some wisdom. here. So we're going to talk about your thyroid. And, and the reason that this is so important is because a lot of times people will think this is part of an isolated system when in reality it is not in any capacity, all right? And what we need to understand about this is that there's this whole access of what's going on and we're gonna get into that a little bit more. But the real reason that we have to understand it in the systems approach is that you can always fall into this trap of becoming a thyroid chaser, okay? That means you're you know, trying out all these different supplements. You're on the desiccated, thyroid glands and the other sort of thyroid things, you're taking all this iodine and you're doing all this stuff, which can affect a very, very sensitive part of your system. And that's when you experience a lot of symptoms. That's when you're like, why is my heart beating out of my chest? Why am I, you know, losing weight all of a sudden? Why do I have no appetite? Why am I gaining weight? Because the thyroid is very, very, very small, but it has a big, big effect. And when you're not able to really adjust that part of your physiology with enough sensitivity, that's when things fall apart. That's when you're finding more hair on your pillow and the shower drain. And when you scratch your hair, you know, more is coming out. And it's just kind of like, what the heck's going on? That's when you're gaining weight, no matter what you eat or how much you exercise. And you feel it every single time you sit down in a chair and you feel your, you know, your back fat there up against the size, or maybe when you try on a pair of jeans and they're not going to fit no matter what you do. And it's just really a defeating point of when you feel like your thyroid or lack of ability to really know what's going on is just, you know, the main obstacle in your way. And despite all the doctors, practitioners and books that you're reading, you haven't been able to put it all together. That's because you don't have the bigger picture that we're going to talk about right here, right now. And so the sort of systems approach here let me screen share um all right here we go and so we need to understand this is kind of like a a bicycle here all right and it'll become a little bit more clear in a second what i mean by that and so your thyroid we'll just make a little box here thigh okay this has a major role in your body. And I always want you to think of your body's ability to produce energy and do awesome, fun things like a car here. And fun fact, if a EMT, that's an electrical magnetic pulse, and you may be thinking, where the hell is Dylan going with this? Stick with me, my friend. <laughs> if an electric magnetic pulse were to go up in the atmosphere, uh, either due to a nuclear detonation or something that China was up to, I know this is getting weird, but trust me. 
what would not work in your life? Obviously, your computer, your laptop, your TVs, but also your car. Why is that? Why would your car not work? That's because all modern cars have electronics in it. These electronics help regulate all the different components here. With that being said, I want you to think of your thyroid as the main electrical regulator of everything that goes on in your body. It's like the computer chip, okay? Now, how does that actually reflect in reality? Because analogies are cool and nice, but they just are made up and, you know, just like gnomes here. And uh, at the end of this video, if you do time, tell me in a comment how many times I've shown you that gnome, I will find something here and I will actually mail it to you, okay? Anyway, so <laughs> what is going on here? So again, this is gonna, we're gonna do a little sidebar here, a little mitochondrial sidebar. Mito sidebar. All right, the key electrical component here. Remember, your mitochondria, when it comes down to it, it's just like this assembly line. Electrons go from here to there, and that gives you energy. And energy just makes you so happy. Energy is what allows you to wake up, feel awesome, and come home and do PG-13 to R-rated things with people um, that you know. And so this is really simply a current. This is no different than electricity going down a wire in your home. Okay, does that make sense? You're picking up what I'm laying down here. So how does your thyroid hormones work into this? And specifically, the, the most bioactive one at this level is going to be T3, all right? And, and zoom back out of the geek stuff there. But just know T3 is going to essentially allow more electron flow here. It's going to increase the current inside of your mitochondria increase the energy. That is the simple, short explanation. And so if you have too much thyroid hormone, something like Graves disease, where you're hyper, per like a cat, hyper thyroid, you're going to be skinny because you're producing a lot of energy. And of course, to produce energy, you're going to need to use fuel in order to do so. And so when you're you know, have too much thyroid hormone, that's what's going to cause the waste, the, the weight to come off. That's what's going to prevent you from building muscle because you're just burning through everything. All right. And it doesn't have to be pathologic per se, because if you don't have enough thyroid hormone and you finally introduce it back in, that's when you get the good stuff. That's when, you know, you can be a little bit lenient in your diet and actually see better results. That's when you can, you know, go on a walk and continue to have energy because you have access to the ability to increase the current to produce energy. All fun stuff, awesome. We don't need to get into the mechanism. We just want to have that little sidebar there so that you understand that component. Any questions on that electrical thing, drop a comment. I'm here, you're here, let's make this happen. And so back to the, this bigger picture here. Well, I guess it's a similarly sized picture. I've never been one to get ratios down. So I wanna talk about two main primary thyroid issues here because there's a whole litany of thyroid issues. It was a great time for me to catch up on a lot of sleep in medical school when learning about the thyroid, because there's so many things and only so many of them are important, but the non-important things are gonna be on the test. And so the main things I wanna talk about here are hypo, okay, low, that is hypothyroidism, and then also Hashimoto's. Now, this isn't gonna be a big, long Hashimoto's, like what stage are you in, what's your antibodies, all this stuff. This is really talking about the initiation and sort of maintenance phase of that disease process. Okay, all the lab markers, all that stuff, that is cool, but I'm, we're not gonna interpret labs here. All right, so how does all this work? So remember, it's this circuit of your thyroid is that electrical switch. It tells everything, okay, turn on, circuit's on, Boom, game time. And so in hypothyroidism, what happens here? Is this actually an issue at the level of the thyroid or is it down at the level of your mitochondria? And if you've watched more than one of my videos, I think you probably know the answer to this is gonna be at the mitochondria, okay? Or the answer is going to be cats or it's going to be gnome, okay? Which number was that? Now, what is happening here? Okay, I want you to imagine, again, this is where the bicycle comes in. Sort of two pathways here. If you wanna think of this as the front wheel and the back wheel, whatever you wanna do, my pleasure. 
So essentially, these two are in tight regulation of each other. All right. The more energy that your mitochondria puts out, that's going to signal to your thyroid, like either, okay, turn it up or turn it down. If there's a lot of energy coming out, it's going to say, slow down. If there's not enough energy, it's going to say, turn it up. This is a normal functioning thyroid. This is not what happens in what we're going to talk about here. That's the, the normal function level that you need to understand, okay? And so what is happening when you're hypothyroid? Because your mitochondria, yes, they produce energy. But what else do they produce? They produce free radicals, okay? This is kind of this exhaust coming out of your engine. And I'm going to put ROS here, okay? Okay, this is just reactive oxygen species. There's many other things, but I'm just going to write ROS there because that's something you'll commonly see for free radicals. And essentially what happens whenever you see a disease process going on, I want you to kind of have your your antennas here or perhaps your, your gnome hat. And I want you to view a disease process as a defensive mechanism, all right? This is a big part of shifting from the paradigm you're in right now, the paradigm that has you doctor's appointment to doctor's appointment to online guru to podcast to podcast, wasting your time, money, and effort, and making you someone that just lives to work and look up how to fix your health to being someone who actually fixes these issues. So listen up here. So defensive mechanism, what are we defending ourselves against? Because when your mitochondria start to break down, which is exactly what's happening when you have fatigue problems, you'll get more exhaust from your car engine. You'll have more free radicals. And so just like when you're driving along the side of the freeway here, if you start blowing up smoke, you have two options. I mean, you have three options, but really let's, let's think about this. You can either speed up, keep going, be like, screw it, let's get to the gas station, let's figure things out, or be like, yeah, whatever, it's just smoke out, whatever. Or you can slow things down or come to a stop and call, you know, uh, AAA, Geico, whatever, and sort things out. So what do you think is going on inside of your body here? When you're blowing out smoke, it's going to tell the thyroid, hey, I'm having some issues. It's not a great day. But let's kind of bring things down a notch. And this pre prevents further damage to your mitochondria. Yay! This is a great short-term thing because the idea is that you're able to set the system back in a way that it bounces back, all right? So the collateral damage of this is all those symptoms that you have. You have brittle nails, your skin, you know, no matter how much lotion you put on it, it just looks wrinkly and you feel like you're just picking up age and you look about 10 years older and you also feel about 10 years older than you actually are. And you're just not able to function as you should. All right, you're putting on weight. You're someone who is just finding more and more hair in the shower, losing your mind. You know, all these things that happen when you don't have enough thyroid hormone and also depression as well. That's that collateral damage here. And so then it becomes a choice because you can, you know, remember there's, there's two sort of wheels on this bicycle and this is sort of the, the bicycle chain. That's what I was getting at in this really contorted analogy here. And so what you want to be thinking of is do you just address one wheel or do you address both of them? And so when you add in things like desiccated thyroid, you add in all these other ways to boost your thyroid function, essentially you're pressing down the gas pedal on your mitochondria and that's going to lead to more and more smoke coming out, more and more damage. Why do you think there's never a discussion on when you're gonna come off your thyroid meds? Why does the dose only go higher and higher? Now you know why, all right? Why does, and here's another thing, why does the weight continue to come on? Despite no matter what you're doing, why does the brain fog get worse despite what you're doing? And it's because of this mitochondrial issue, okay? And for the weight gain to make the connection really clear, remember, they're your engines. They burn your fuel. If your engines stink, the fuel is just going to pile up. Okay? Now, it's a very similar, and any questions on the hypothyroid component there? I know I would probably say the majority of people I speak to struggle with that. 
So if you have any questions, put it in the comments. I'm right here. We're here to hang out, have some blasts, um, and talk about this. So other thing, Hashimoto's. Of course, you know this is an autoimmune process. It is indeed not an attack inside of your body by all the gnomes inside of there. Remember, there's a prize at the end. And when this is going on, what is going on here? It's, it's the very exact same thing here. Okay. And there's many different phases of what's going on, but we have to extend out the effect of these free radicals here. So your mitochondria, they make free radicals. And what do these free radicals do? Do they, you know, become alive? Do they go on vacation to Punta Canta and take pictures and post it on social media? Or do they mess up the place? So you can tell already, they mess up the place. And exactly what they do is they will damage proteins inside your body. And if you think of how the immune system works, it works like this. You have an immune cell here. And it's looking with its, you know, immune cell glasses or whatever. And, you know, we can make it kind of look like a, a police officer here. Or now it looks like a grandma. But anyway, your immune grandma. Anyway, it's going to look for proteins. And it's going to be, here's a protein. And this protein, look, everything looks fine on it. So it's going to be, it's going to be fine. It's a protein. It's a pea. Okay, it looks great. But if there's a pea over here, like a protein, it looks a little funky, okay? Maybe, maybe it has a mustache, okay? What the heck is that, you know? What is going on here? And the default programming of your immune cells is that this thing is foreign, we must attack, which works out great when the only funky looking proteins, the only foreign looking ones are coming from the outside, okay? You have an infection, there's foreign looking proteins, you attack there, Bada bing, bada boom, infection destroyed, you're good, everyone's awesome. But if you have proteins inside of your body that are natural there, and then you alter them, and then your immune cells res respond to that, now we have a problem, okay? Because then you're creating this autoimmune, I mean self, self-immune reaction. Your immune system is attacking itself. And this is exactly what happens here because mitochondria, when they're malfunctioning, produce too many free radicals. And then that leads to more. And we'll, we'll use the big fancy term here. Epitope generation. Okay. You want to get really fancy. If you want to look this up on PubMed later, it is a neo epitope, new epitope. But epitope is something, it's like the mustache on the pea. It's something that is foreign and tells your body that this should not be here, okay? It's just like the snow, all right? This should not be here. And so when we are thinking about this, this is how the immune reaction really kicks off. And this is also what the research has shown is that you have the ability to produce, produce these neo epitopes by yourself. Okay, and it's, of course, comes back to this mitochondrial dysfunction here. And so when that's going on, it's the same thing. What happens in people with Hashimoto's? All right, they can be high, they can be low, but you know, a lot of times people end up low because the majority of these are made inside of the thyroid that is attacked, and that's why you have that decrease in function, and that's why Hashimoto's will, you know, many times goes into this hypothyroid picture. And what did we say when you do all the things to boost, boost your thyroid function? You make this problem worse. You can cover it up with all sorts of things, of course. But the thing is, you're never fixing this problem, and you could be, you know, forfeiting more and more thyroid function as time goes on. And so this is why, you know, <laughs> when I speak to people, yeah, we say fatigue, but like, what am I going to really say? It's very hard to get across to people. Like, oh, you know, this is all about mitochondrial function and, 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 and gnomes and free radicals. It's, you know, it's when you have such a fundamental approach, this divergence of these concepts, because this can apply to many other disease processes with, you know, variations, of course. But if you're not at this deep level, that is when you're, you know, stuck on all of these smaller points. This is why when you are like, okay, well, 
you know, I'm having an autoimmune reaction. Let's go on the autoimmune paleo diet or whatever. Okay, cool. That may help. You may be bringing in epitopes through what you're eating. But what did we say about your body making them? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the main problem. That's what kicked this off in the first place. And, of course, you know, if you're someone who's eating, I don't know, cheesecake, hot dogs, and something else kind of gross. And cheesecake's pretty good, but, you know, once a year or so. Um, then, obviously, that's going to be its own issue. But that being said, remember, the fuel you put into the engine at best can preserve it. So you need to be thinking about the engine itself in terms of the mitochondria. But of course, then the other thing becomes is that if you boost your mitochondria too much, then you're not fixing any of the issues within the thyroid itself. Does that make sense? If there's any questions here. Okay. And so those are, you know, kind of the, the main concepts there. And I also want you to think, I mean, this really any autoimmunity thing, this same principle applies here okay so it's really important for you to grasp this concept lupus um crohn's disease ulcerative colitis many many things this free radical picture critically important where your body breaks down is all based on what's going on in your own physiology here and so I have some questions here before we kind of go further so i have Jane Hill here, and she says, what about low iodine? This is a good question, and uh, I guess I'll kind of ex expand on for when you say not having enough iodine leading to hypothyroidism. If that's the uh, question, let me know, because I think it's either, it's either that or it is uh, low thiodine making things worse in what we're talking about. Let me, let me know if you're, if you're still hanging out with us, kind of clarify that question there. Uh, but I will try to answer it right now to the best of my ability. And so when we're talking about the role of iodine, yes, if you have a very iodine deficient diet, you're not getting in salt, you're not getting it in seafood being one of the most common ones. If you're having that issue, yes, that's when you get those hypothyroidism or you know goiters is the more classical thing but the thing in there is you know that's actually very uncommon in today's modern world and the other sort of issue to this is that when you don't have enough or when you think it's low iodine and then you add it back in remember you're causing that problem again because okay here we go we got a clarification low urine iodine lab results. So I love this because this brings up a cooler point here. So I'll just leave this up. I'll, I'll hover myself right over Jane here. And <laughs> so essentially what goes on is I'll, I'll answer kind of my line of thought and then I'll get into this one here. And so again, when you add iodine into the system like that, it could cause that overdrive in the mitochondria and cause things to go into this other sort of overdrive state, more free radicals. The other part of that is when you flood the system with iodine on, on you know either a consistent basis or every now and then, your body will actually become more resistant to the uptake of it, okay? So that's why using things like that, very, very tricky. The other component to that that I was going with that is iodine is a very strong antioxidant, right? And so remember, your body communicates with these free radicals. And so if you're adding that in like that on a daily basis, it, again, it's going to blunt that system of communication and prevent you from being able to rebound into health as quickly as possible. And I know it's a lot of hand motions, but I'm just so excited about it. I swear I don't have hyperthyroidism. All right. And then uh, the point here is the low urine iodine lab results and the role in fatigue. And so this is an interesting one because with urine iodine, remember, it's always about knowing how much is in the functional compartment. And the matchup between urine and inside fat soluble tissues, because remember urine is water soluble, your thyroid and nerves, like I talked about, they're fat soluble. And so they don't really reflect one another there. And so unless you have you know, a, a history that matches up with low iodine intake and you have, you know, the other 
labs that would match up with the, the urine, iodine, or even the hair mineral analysis, I don't really like to put too much weight into that. Um, and then Sarah Whitmore Schuster. So what if my TSH was over four when I am not on meds? Does that indicate a legitimate thyroid disorder? And so this is um, kind of the, I guess the broader stroke of this question, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the idea of subclinical thyroid hypothyroidism. And let me know if I'm way off on that. I'll, I'll answer the question as if that's the correct premise here. And so what is going on in this scenario? When you're in this sort of, because the, you know, the high range is you see above five, above 5.5, above six, et cetera. That's usually what it is. But we have to remember that when, and I know this may be a boring point for many people, but we just need to have the basics in place here, is that, come on, move. When you have any lab, okay, this is why this is a beautiful question here. You have, they're, they're all based on a normal distribution, okay? And we'll just say 5.5 above this. This is thyroid here. Above this is clearly way too high. And for those who may be new to this whole thing, when TSH is high, that means thyroid hormone. Okay, we'll say three and four can be low. But essentially, this means that your body has to stimulate your thyroid gland more and more and more to get the same out of it, all right? It's just like if you're that lazy kid who would never get out of their bed in the morning, your family's going to be yelling at you more and more and more. It's going to stimulate you more and more to get the heck out of your room. So TSH high means your thyroid is under-functioning, okay? So when it is too high here, this is saying that out of all the people who have had their thyroid, their TSH checked, you're in the top, I think it's like 5%, something like that, okay? Here's the thing, okay? This normalcy, how much this correlates to actually being healthy? Completely unknown. It's just arbitrary numbers and distributions. And so when we think about something like a four, okay? I mean, we're still pretty far over here on the curve because now, like, I'm, I don't know the exact numbers here, but maybe you're in the top 15%. Okay, do you want to be in the top 15% of the most tired people, of the most underfunctioning thyroids? Probably not. And you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Because the idea is that there's normal labs and there's optimal labs. Okay, those are two completely different things and really depend on your own physiological condition here. And so if you are more over here, We'll say 0.5 is too low. If you're at one, let's say thyroid TSH of one, this means you're in a pretty good function. You have the, not like good, but like you're at the top percentile of function. Of all the thyroids out in the land, this side of the Mississippi, you're in the top 5% or the top 10%, okay? And so that could be good, but then again, that could also mean you have Graves disease, okay? But you usually see more of a TSH of zero in that scenario. And so when you're thinking about numbers here, we also have to remember, are we chasing numbers or things that we actually care about? Because if your TSH is four, this is in general, not for you. I'm not your doctor, this is not medicine. If my TSH is four, okay, and I can lose weight easily, I don't have carbohydrate cravings, my sleep is fantastic, I'm not losing any hair, um, no constipation. If I have no symptoms, all right, then who really cares about the four? Because the other thing is, when, when you when you want to think about an algorithm for all your labs, the first question is, is this thing actually real? Because there's many times you can get labs back that don't reflect reality at all, and then you're just like, oh my God, my TSH was four, and I've been doing all these things forever, and I'm an absolute failure, and I need to uh, da, da, da 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 okay? And so that's why it always needs to have a context in terms of what's going on in your life, the symptoms you're experiencing, all those things in that scenario. And so when I work with my clients, this is what we do. It's, it's never as simple as this number good, this number bad. It's really the whole picture. But even then, it, it is all about learning. Okay, here we go. Here's some follow-up that it develops further. 
Sarah is asking because she's had severe health issues. Okay, so one, thank you for being here and glad you, that it looks like it's in the past tense, so good to have those severe health issues in the past. Um, and then what are TSH was for? So this is what I was talking about with the context here, all right? When, if I didn't know that, you know, it's really hard to say, but here, number matches up with symptoms. Okay, this is an area of investigation. That's what I want you all to think about here. Okay, so it continues, seemed to get better when I went on thyroid meds. Awesome, so had an issue, did something, saw a change in her symptoms. Perfect. Uh, seemed to get better on thyroid meds, but now I'm experiencing worsening problems despite being on increasing doses, like I was saying. There you go. Because remember, what did I say about the whole, we're not, we're only fixing one part of the sort of bicycle here, okay? You're on the thyroid side, but you're not so much on the mitochondria side, okay? And I know this is a really weird motion with my hand, so I'll stop it. Uh, but that is, you know, exactly what happens. Because another thing here is when you're on a medication like that, you're not having the natural ebb and flow that you should in your thyroid hormone, and then things get dysregulated from there. That is why, you know, medications, yes, they can help you a ton. But the long-term ramifications... Okay, you know that kitten home alone? That's like that's how you should be feeling at times. Because your body is not as simple as, you know, a recipe where you add a little bit here, a little bit there. It's not like a Rubik's Cube either. Okay. You know, there's a lot of different parts, and it shouldn't take you three years to fix a Rubik's Cube, and it shouldn't take you three years to fix your thyroid issues, or even three months. All right. And so this is why it's so critically important as you know we've talked about with Jane and Sarah here. And that's why it's like just critically important to really know all the system components that are going on. And this is just a part of it. Cause we, you know, when we were talking about the, the mitochondria inside of, you know, your thyroid gland and elsewhere, you know, it breaks down in so many different areas. Cause you gotta know what's going on in the gut, what's going on in your adrenals. It's really all connected. And if you're just like on that thyroid myopia, then you're going to miss the bigger picture and you're going to continue to do so. And that's when you continue to deteriorate. And that's why I'm always here to help you get that clarity on these lives and also on our breakthrough calls where we really work through what are your symptoms? You know, when is the brain fog the worst? When do you feel like no matter what you do, you feel like you just want to cry and lay in bed and just do nothing, you know, right after changing your thyroid medications? How awful is your sleep? How many times are you waking up? How dysfunctional are you? I mean, are you still able to do your job? These are all things that we really need to, you know, get into and really assess here because just like we were talking about, we can have numbers all day, but if we're not able to correlate with what they mean in the real world, then we're not able to really get down deep into that system. And that's what I want to help you do. And that's why we have these breakthrough calls and they're really fun. We talk about what's going on and where you want to go and how we can connect those two. And if we're fit, you know, we'll talk about what that can look like. But if I feel anytime someone or something else is going to help you way, way better, then I'll steer you in that direction because this is all about you, all right? Your thyroid issues, your fatigue issues, bigger, more systemic issue than you think. And that's why you need that level of help. And so go ahead, you know, go to the link below there and optimalcircadianhealth.com forward slash talk, grab a time, fill out a form. And we've got some more questions here. All right, so from, I'm gonna mispronounce your name. So both of them, I just call you S, I'll call you S. Uh, so what happened to the thyroid after toxic, thyrotoxicosis? Can the thyroid go back to normal after the hypophase? Or must we go on medication for life. So this depends on, I'll, I'll just speak generally, because uh, again, I can't speak to your specific scenario. So this question to me is, uh, when there's a um, thyrotoxicosis, how does that play out long-term? So it really depends on how much thyroid tissue is left, okay? And, you know, the other thing you want to think about is that even if there's not enough left, your body can sensitize to a lower amount of thyroid hormone, okay? And, you know, there's other things involved there, but so it depends on how much is left because these thyroid toxicosis events can cause a significant amount of damage and, you know, some people will lose a huge, huge amount. That being said, you can make that recovery back. 
because if you have enough of the thyroid still there, then it's really about focusing in on the mitochondria, which you can replace and optimize in you know very short amount of time, two to four months, depending on what's going on in your life. And then that's when you can kind of bring that back to normal. But again, remember, the hypophase is a protective mechanism here, because if it were to go back into a normal mode, that's going to make things even worse throughout the system. Okay? It's a really important point. That's a really good question. And if anyone has any other questions, this was a lovely time with some great questions there. So, again, to help you figure out the bigger questions. What's going on? Where do I want to go? How can I fix it? How many times was the gnome here? If you want to go to optimalcircadianhealth.com forward slash gnome, I mean talk, and book your time there, okay? And again, if anyone knows how many times the gnome was there, I'll uh, send you something special, okay? All right, with that, everyone, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something, and I hope to see your name pop up on the calendar. And we have another question come in. Jane Hill at the last moment. I've heard you say before that your cells leak light with fatigue. What does that mean? This is like a big question. This is like when Molly asked me, like, what do you love about me? So um, the answer to this is that I'm going to need a whiteboard for this. This is what that means. This could be a whole nother live here. Okay. Let me just put this here. Okay. All right, so this is kind of related, because remember we said your mitochondria put out a bunch of stuff here. And anytime there's a reaction here, okay, let, let's think about this. You have a, a fire, right? You have, you have a fire, okay? And you add fuel and you uh, take a match, put it in there, and you add oxygen as well, and then you get this big amount of energy that comes out, okay? Energy, but what is that energy? It is light energy, it's infrared, red, all the things you see, if it's really, really hot, it'll be blue. And your cell's job is to be structured in a way such that it is able to keep all that energy in. It's just like if you had a stove, you want to be to keep all the heat in. And so when that heat escapes, that means one of two things. One, your cells are not set up in the proper structure. They don't have the proper protein, the proper water, et cetera, such that it captures all of that light. Thus, if they're not healthy, they will leak light, okay? And then the other component to this is that uh, your cells can be set up perfectly for certain wavelengths of light, you know, 320, 400, 850, all this stuff. But the thing is, if your your flame here is putting out the different frequencies than what is expected, then it's just going to go right through, okay? Because unlike the heat in sort of a, if you have a, a, a big wooden stove that will just pretty much keep everything in, you want to think of your cell, it has like filters for different lights, like it's going to capture uh, 421 nanometers, and it's going to capture 535 here. So if there's something that's like, you know, 545, it's not designed for this, it's just going to go right on through, okay? Makes sense? Clear as mud. <laughs> okay. All right, then. So with that, hope you guys see you on the, the calendar there, optimalcircadianhealth.com forward slash talk. Thank you for such a fun thyroid time. Any other questions, I'll get through the comments later and uh, see you around.